Hi, my name is Cheryl Kelly, and I am going over my book, The Last Kingdom, Will Even the Elect Be Deceived? And we're still in chapter five, and we're uh, speaking about Noah and about how uh, Noah was the eighth Melchizedek and how he was the new beginning to a new world that Yovah was starting over with him and his family. And it says, you know, that everything that Yovah does, he does in cycles. So we have the this cycle starting all over again of the Melchizedek. And, the, you know, a lot of teachers are not teaching on the Melchizedek because they only see the Melchizedek uh, only one time in Scripture. And that's when Abraham met the Melchizedek, the king of righteousness in Salem, where he made a peace offering with him. And so they, they see that as a type of Christ, but they, and they see, they see that, you know, cause the Melchizedek order is an order that will never end. It's an eternal order. Mm -hmm. And so they see that this is a type of Messiah of Yeshua, which it is, it's an office, you know, which Yeshua, it will, it holds this office now. And he, cause he is of the order of Melchizedek. Uh, it's in a heavenly order. It's an eternal order. Mm -hmm. But to reconcile the earth back to the heavens, there has to be a priest or someone that represents and fills this office that brings reconcilia reconciliation between heaven and earth. I mean, there's someone that's got to stand in proxy. And that has to be a man. Mm -hmm. It has to be someone of the, of the human race. It can't just be... Uh, uh, some uh, an arbitrary person or creature or God him or God himself in spirit form to mediate because he gave this mediation to man he gave it to Adam and and like I've spoken before Yovah doesn't deviate from a plan so when he made Adam his husbandman over the earth his and gave him dominion and and Adam stood in proxy for the earth and mediated creation just because he advocated that authority and that power doesn't mean that uh Yavah has deviated and said oh well that's it's you know he he forfeited so let's just let's let's turn aside and change my plans no he never changes he's the same yesterday today and forever so he never changes we may change we may deviate we may not be we may get off course but he always will have a remnant. He will always have a man that will stand in representative of him and of heaven. Because his desire and plan is to, uh, to be one house. Just like Adam was created, one house for Yovah, Adam and Eve, <laughs> that he could impart his word in or his seed into and that they could expand in the earth it has not changed so but we know that yeshua came from heaven but he came as a servant he came as a man so he was completely fully human but in his blood in his uh, he was the only begotten son of the father so he came forth from the godhead that made him a god man he was 100% God and 100% um, human to be able to reconcile the humanity back into this right status with Yovah. He had to, he had to come in the likeness of man or in the likeness of Adam to be able to redeem humanity. But because we're all in the same boat of sin and death that it has got into our our vessel and into our our being we are corrupt and defiled we uh, we have to have uh, a, a representative that is not defiled that knew no sin that that kept himself pure that is pure and has kept himself pure you know he this blood has to be without spot without wrinkle without any kind of defilement and as we see in this passover season that everyone was celebrating passover the lamb that represents yeshua 
is the spotless Lamb of God. There cannot be any any blemish, any defilement, any anything that could uh, that could uh, that that could anyway mark him as being the holy representative the holy representative of God because only pure blood, only holiness, without holiness, it is, it, you cannot see God. We, we, God is holy and he will not allow unholiness to be in his presence. There's got to be a representative that is holy, that, could, that can stand before God, that can stand in our place, that, that we, we are gathered into him. He is our representative. He is our mediator. He is our, he is our high priest. He stands as a veil to cover our sins, to, so that when Yovah sees us, he doesn't see our, our unrighteousness. He doesn't see our sin. He doesn't see the, 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 where the serpency has, and sin and death has come and corrupted our vessels. No, he sees Yeshua's blood. That's why the blood has to be uh, applied to our hearts and to our soul. And, you know, I like how uh, Bill Cloud was saying that the blood was, that, that the blood was applied on the inside of the house where it, on the that it's because it's an inward work and I thought that was a good revelation because the when the death angel passed it was you know it passed over there the house that had the blood that was applied on the doorpost but it wasn't visible for all the Egyptians or for all the world to see because it was a hidden inside the house only the family members only the people that were inside the house knew that the that the lamb's blood was over their doorpost, and so this shows a a very significant type and shadow that this is an inward word. This is a this is a blood that is applied upon our soul, and and and, and inside our vessel and inside our house, because this is the house. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are a we are we are our bodies belongs to to him to the to god and it's not of our own and god is repairing the breach he's repairing the 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 defect because we are the fallen tabernacles of david and we have to be restored and the only way we can be restored is by the blood of yeshua by the spotless lamb of god that had made that poured out his soul so many souls can come into into his house into under his covering so that we could be that we can be uh, made new in him so when we are when we are interacting in worship and prayers and when we go boldly before the throne room of god we're we are not coming on our own efforts we're not coming on our own will we're not coming in our own likeness but we're but we are submitting ourselves to the to the to the blood that Yeshua poured out, we are we are we're applying that in our lives. We're repenting of our sins. We're turning away from the defilements of the world, and we're coming into Him. And now He covers us. He veils us. He protects us. He's He told Israel. He said, "I would love to gather you like sheep, like chicks. No, I'm sorry, I like chicks under my wings, but you would not." He wants to gather like a mother hen. And gather his people under his wings to cover us and to protect us. We, he is our shelter. He is our he is our covering from from the enemy. Not not you know, nonetheless the enemy, but also from the wrath of God. You know he shields us and 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 he's the one that stands in the holiness. He makes us holy. He cleanses us and he purifies us so that we can be tabernacles temples of the holy spirit undefiled set apart sanctified consecrated unto holiness but not by anything that we can do all we can do is yield all we can do is submit all we can do is humble ourselves recognize our sins confess our sins see where where the breaches are where the enemy has got into to uh, widen the breach, you know, yes, the serpent got in and he breached man 
and brought in sin and death, but we participate in sin. We participate in this world, and that breach of separation from God just gets wider and wider. And we have to, he stands in that gap. He stands in that breach. And he is pulling you and he's pulling God into this reconciliation. And he's pulling us together where we are, we are becoming one in spirit. He stands in the gap. He stands in that breach. And he's the one that will that will make us right in right standing he will reconcile us to the eternal home and to the eternal realm and in him mm -hmm. and so but before we can get to this reconciliation before messiah could come before all this could take place there must be a kingdom there must be there must be examples they've, they've everything's got to be set up in the natural before God, for yoga be able to transfer it into the supernatural before there has to be a kingdom of israel there's got to be a kingdom of priests there has to be these uh these uh examples of 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 where we are at where where we're where we're so in, inadequate. These are what these feast days and and these uh, sacrifices and all these things are to show us our sin, to show us our rebellion, to show us how separate, how we are so separate from a holy God, how we're so uh, how we can't come in and uh, uh, dwell in, in the presence of a holy God. It takes blood, it takes a sacrifice, it takes, it takes uh, you know, going through all these rituals and going through all this purification to be able even to come into his house. Mm -hmm. Even though the, the temple was, is just, a, it's just as an example. It, you know, it, it shows us the house of God and it shows how segregated the house of God is towards sin, towards the works of darkness, towards sin and death. The house of God was established when King Solomon built the temple of God. And when all these laws and rules and regulations were keeping the Gentiles out, keeping uh, uh, profane uh, situations outside of Yah's house. You know, you couldn't come in if you were a leopard. You couldn't come in if you uh, had uh, any kind of impurification or semen, you know, you or any kind of uh, nidal with uh, with uh, the woman's uh, menstrual. You could not even come near to the house of God. You know, it's showing that this blood cannot come into this house. Do you see? So if, even if you had admissions the night before, you you were you were to be set apart for a whole day. You're to wash yourself, cleanse yourself, and then you are you will be set out until evening, until the next day, because the because day started in the evening. It's the morning. What is it? The evening and the morning is a new day. So when in in Yovah's time counting of time, the day started at, at sunset. Mm -hmm. And so you would be unclean unto evening until the till you were able to go back to the new day. So that whole day you were set apart, that whole day you were segregated. Just not on maybe on the fault of your own, just how sometimes our bodies work, sometimes how our body, you know, it's not the fault of our own of, the, of women has to menstruate you know it's not the fault of our own that our our bodies uh, has emissions and and it and it has things that come out of our bodies that are considered unclean does that make sense so we 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 emit things like spit and and all these uh things in our body you know what i mean our our our, our fluids our bodily fluids in itself is considered unclean that is no fault of our own that has to do with the sin nature that has to do that our vessels are are uh, been breached and there's and now we have this defilement we are we are we are we are tainted does that make sense with this this nature that is so unholy mm -hmm. and so when we look 
at the temple. It is just a, it's just a picture of the heavenly tabernacle. And he's showing us this separation, the segregation that must take place. And, and the, not that he is a, you know, one, uh, a God that, uh, that uh, is a prejudice. He's only a prejudice against the works of darkness against evil the you know the principalities and powers of the air the wor the workings of darkness we just have to to be breached with that so god has to separate himself from that he loves us that's what the bible says for god so loved us that he gave his only begotten son he, his son because he loves us you know and he has made a plan for us to be restored that's the good news of the gospel that we can be reconciled and restored back to the kingdom of God, back to the eternal realm and the eternal heavens. Because this is all going to be perishing. It's all going to be done away with. So God is looking to cleanse your soul, cleanse your mind, cleanse your spirit, to make you new, a new man, born again of the spirit, so he can receive you back into the eternal realm. That's, that's the plan of God. So, but anyways, to start, we're, so we're starting in the beginning. And so in the beginning, we are learning and we're, and we're, we're following the patterns in scriptures that show us and teach us how to get restored back to the heavenly realm, how we can be undefiled. And so when we look at the Melchizedek as Noah being the eighth preacher of righteousness, you know, he is starting a new beginning. And so, uh, and so we look at it here, it says, we know, we, uh, so Noah was perfect in, in all his generations. So he was undefiled. Mm -hmm. He was, that means that he, yes, he had the sin nature, but he had not yet, but he had not corrupted himself. He had not furthered that breach. He was still retrievable. He he had not yet turned it was re turned over to be a reprobate where you cannot be retrieved. And the Bible says in the last days, men will be turned over to reprobate. Even the reprobation of the, of the faith, they, were, they would be reprobates even of the faith because our minds get so twisted and, and get so defiled by the, the doctrines that are being put out there that we, we lose all sense of reality we lose our sense of focus on scripture we 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 lose the simplicity we get so knowledgeable and we're and we're and we're so motivated by knowledge that we we learn and we tend to move away from just the simplicity of scripture and really what what this is all about yes god is deep and you can never, we're never going to get to the end of his mind. And we're never going to get to the end of scripture. Because when you start going into scripture, you're going to find yourself going down a treasure hunt. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're, you're going to go through and you're going to look at things and see things. <laughs> and, and, and you're going to dig out some deep revelations in scripture. I, you know, yes, we can't get to the end of y'all's mind it's it's just our we're our minds are just um are are, are, are finite to his infinite his uh, his mind is what an infinite mind mm -hmm. and ours is just a finite mind mm -hmm. that we can never really understand the the depths of god and his mercy oh how was that scripture uh you know oh search oh uh, uh the search on so it says in uh, it says uh, in Romans eleven thirty three it says oh the depths of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God how unsearchable his judgments and his ways past finding out mm -hmm. uh, it says the heavens for heights and the earth for depths and the hearts of a king is unsearchable which is Yovah as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and the greatness is unsearchable. Right. That's a beautiful scripture. Which does, which does great things and unsearchable marvelous things without number. These are some of the, you know, some of the related verses to that. 
And then Ephesians 3, 8, it says, Unto me, who I am less than the least of all the saints, in the grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Messiah Yeshua. Mm -hmm. So we can never get to an end to uh, to the things of y'all, to, to, to what we have in Messiah, what Yeshua has done for us, what this all entails. You know, our minds can't even comprehend. That's true. The things that that he has prepared for us, the things that he that he wants to show us, but he's preparing us little by little. But he's got to first. He's got to restore us. He's got to mend us. He's got to. He has to got to cleanse us. So he that and he's got to get us through testing so that we're not lifted up in pride. Right. We're not lifted up in in knowledge. But you know we want to know him. On such a personal level we don't want to know about him we want to know him intimately mm -hmm. what what good is to know him know the word know scripture you know to be wise in all things concerning scripture but fail to have an intimate relationship with with him never to experience his presence never experience his goodness never really to experience uh, you know, his, his power inside of you. I mean, we really need to come to a place in life that what is important, what is important to know about him or to really know him, mm -hmm. to really know and to under, understand the workings <laughs> that he, that he is doing for believers and, and, and his plans for us. He has great plans for us. And so, and he has plans to restore us. And he has plans to do, only do good for us. If we would submit, if we yield ourselves. What's that scripture in Jeremiah that he has plans for us? What's that? Not to harm us. But to do good. But to do good. What's it? Plans. I can't find it on this. Let's see. Sometimes these things don't work out, you know, as you put words in there. It says, uh, Jeremiah. If I can find it, but we we understand with that scripture that he he ha, he has plans for us to do good and not harm, to restore us and to love us, mm -hmm. and to bring us into into a right standing with him. And so you know, his his plans for us are good, mm -hmm. and he is worth trying to find out. He he you know we we need to try to find out what he's all about. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to find out what his, what his plan is for each one of us individually. We need to find out what his plans are for the world and how how he wants us to separate from the world and how we can get aligned so we're not deceived. So we're always on his side and not on the enemy side. And we're not being swept away by false doctrines and, and lies and and how the enemy wants to sway us in the wrong direction. But we need to be anchored in God, anchored in Yeshua, and fixed on Him. Because He's the only one that's going to lead us in these days of darkness. And in, the, in these days that are, when everything is so so obscured. And so and not really anybody has a, 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 a finger or you know, on the situation right. everybody's are, are, have different opinions and we really have no way of knowing what to believe anymore because there's just so many so many negative and false things out there that are that are not true and and we have to, and we have to understand that that that's that's the game that's the game of the enemy is to keep us in in a state of confusion. So that if when there's lies being put out there and and, and life 
lies and truth at the same time and you're not knowing what is a lie and what is true then you get really confused you get really mixed up Mm -hmm. and yeah and not focus so much on the world not focus on on the outward but, yes. but but stay consistent search him out seek his will and and long to be in his presence uh -huh. if we long to be in his presence then how can we go wrong right how can we go wrong if we're in the middle of his presence 100 percent all the time if our minds are and hearts are are in in entangled and involved in him and and we are in in this state of of being in his presence how can we be led astray we can't be mm -hmm. even when we our minds don't understand it doesn't mean and it doesn't mean that we have to understand it. All we know is that we hear his voice and his voice is the only voice we hear and we're not going to be moved and we, and we will know what is God, what, what is his, what, what he is doing because you have known him on such an intimate level, level that you would not, you will not fall prey. You know, you will not be deceived. You would not, you, you will, you will figure out the imposters out there. So you would figure out the lies out there because especially when they come, come, you know, come close to you, when they, when you're being affected personally, you're not going to be the one that is going to be left in darkness. Right. Because you know him and you know his attributes, you know his, his character, you know him on such an intimate level that you're not going to be fooled. Uh -huh. And so when, so when the enemy comes, you know, and brings all these things your way, you're going to be able to spot it. We may not know everything on a corporate level or on a world's point of view, but we'll, we know it when it, when it comes at our, at our door. Uh -huh. If it's the if it's God or if it's the enemy, and we know how to shun away from the from the things that are of the enemy, mm -hmm. and hold to the things which are of God, mm -hmm. and that and that is that is our walk. We we need to cling to the things that are that are that are holy, which are that are acceptable unto Him. We need to cling to Him and hold tight. You know, I I. Uh, constantly just want to be at you know you know you have you ever heard that scripture you know that you got seven women that you know it holds to the seat seat of one man and mm -hmm. says come and t t you know you know let you know let me be a part of you basically what he's saying let me join with you uh -huh. you know because you know I know the Lord is with you that's kind of how we should be we should be wanting to be at his feet we should be wanting to hold on to his seat, his 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 him, and 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 not worry so much about what's going on right here, out out right around us, uh -huh. and not live in the fear of this world, but cling to him, hold on to him, you know, hold on to and humble yourself, and not try to figure it out. On the external, don't try to figure out what's going on on the peripheral, but cling to him because he can't lead you astray. Right. You know, learn to humble yourself. Learn to repent quickly. Learn to to humble yourselves so that you will be you you can be that person that has got a hand on on his on his him. That you you know that you're not depending on anybody else but him in this life to get you through this life. That's that should be our heart. That should be that should be what we focus on. We shouldn't try to figure these things out independently from him, or or even to try to uh, you know make our own opinions or assessments, because mm -hmm. you know the things out here are subject to change. Things out here they 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 change like the wind. So you you know one way we're with this way and the other way we're doing this thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, and, and then now this this is a significant thing and now this is a significant thing and everybody's finding out this and everybody's finding out about that and it keeps us in a state of contention 
keeps us our, our our anxiety up it keeps us our adrenaline going that's what the enemy wants. right and keeps us in a state of fight and flight because we're never at peace because we're always learning something new about what the enemy is doing to all of, of humanity so it, we are always in a state of trauma mm -hmm. and so instead of living in the peace of god and that's where Satan wants us. He wants us to be traumatized. He wants to he wants to keep us in the state of fear because <laughs> fear will motivate us to do foolish things. <clears throat> and instead of he wants us away from believing and having faith in in God's <laughs> provision for us. Does that make sense? And his protection for us that he's going to he's going to be the one that will take us through. But if he keeps us in a place where we think we have to do it ourselves, that we have to prepare ourselves, we've got to do, we've got to make the preparations of 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 our survivals and of our lives. Which it's not bad to plan ahead, but if we're solely dependent on the our the works of our hands and and and, and securing ourselves. We're going to end up. We're we're not. We're going to end up losing in the end. We can only do so much. Mm -hmm. We can only provide for ourselves so much. We can only secure ourselves so much. Mm -hmm. We've we've got to relinquish all those things so that the Holy Spirit can lead us. Because just uh, what a few weeks ago, we had a tornado that went through our town and demolished like a whole what a half mile block mm -hmm. and all these businesses and all these places where the homes were demolished you know and everything that was that they had every all their security their whole life was wiped away within what two seconds of a tornado coming through so we can't put stock on this life we can't hold on to the things of this life. We can't secure ourselves. Because like a whirlwind, the enemy can come in and take, take it all away. Mm -hmm. Just like Job. In a split second, it can be all taken away from you. So we don't hold on to these things. We, we prepare, but we do it within the leading of the Spirit. And we do it in, in faith. As the Lord leads you. Don't work and operate in the fear of it all. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So anyways, Noah found grace in the sight of God. Noah was not uh, a law to himself, but he followed God's instructions. So he kept, you know, his God gave him personal instruction, told him to build an ark. See, this is the difference between following rules of, of, of religious rules that are man-made rules and getting a personal mandate from heaven. He had a personal mandate from heaven to build an ark. And if he did not build that ark, of course, he would not be saved. But he heard God's voice. God told him to build the ark, gave him the dimensions uh, and the know-how to do the ark, gave him the, the capabilities and the resources to do it, and, and gave him this allotted time to prepare him, himself and his family in this ark. And then he was able to save his whole house by what God instructed him to do, by the obedience of faith, not by fear, he wasn't motivated by fear. He was motivated by the voice of God. Yes. And we need to come to a place in our life that we're not motivated by what people say, what the TV says, or what the news says, or what other minister says, or what other people are saying. We've got to bend our ears towards heaven and find out the instructions personally for our lives. Because every person that is going to go through this uh, end time scenario are going, their destinies are going to be different. Their, the outcomes are going to be different. God's plan for each person is going to be different. And what God's wanting you to do may be different from this person's. So we've really got to get a personal mandate from heaven to really understand 
where, where, how he's going to position us in these last days, how he's going to protect us, or is it my destiny to be a martyr, or is it my destiny to, you know, to die for the faith? You know, these things we've got to settle in our own minds and hearts that we we don't stop the hand of God. And we are not trying to secure ourselves, but we're putting, but we're putting our faith and trust in Him. That whatever the outcome may be, no matter what happens, I want to be faithful to do God's will God. in the midst of it, and, and and do and 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 be be ready, ready to do whatever He's called me to do, even in the hard times, even in the most terrifying times that we may be confronted with. Even in the most difficult time that we are going to stay faithful and true, believing him that all things work together for good to those who love him and are called to his purposes. So we love God. We cling to him. We cling to the Holy Spirit. We cling to the Yeshua's him. We don't look from the right or the left. We are, our eyes are fixed on him. And then we're not going to waver. We're not going to make foolish decisions. But we're going to be led. Those who are led by the Spirit, they are sons of God. We're trying to be led. We're not, we're not trying to do our own will. We're not trying to do, do what we think we should do. We're not trying to, to, to uh, you know, manipulate the plan of God or try to thwart God's plan for us. We're not trying to secure ourselves. We're not trying to do anything but be willing vessels humbled enough to be able to be able to go into these days without fear and without favor without the favor of others i mean and but only loving and requiring his favor and wanting to do his will and being able to endure the hardships right. like a good soldier because really the favor we want is God's favor. Yes. We don't want the favor of man. Right. We don't want the favor that, you know, because that's going to give you, comp that's going to make you compromise. That's going to make you lose focus. That's going to, that's going to get you off course. But if you, but if you put it in your heart that you're going to obey his voice and you're only seeking his favor, you're only seeking his will. He is not going to, he is not going to turn aside from that. Exactly. He, you're going to also, you're going to bend his ear towards you. And he's going to be faithful. Isn't that true? He is going to be faithful to those who desire and seek his favor. His approval. You seek his approval. You seek his favor. You do his will. At all costs, you are, he's going to rise up just like he rose up with Stephen. Like Yeshua rose up when Stephen, he proclaimed the truth first. He proclaimed the truth with passion, right? Mm -hmm. He proclaimed it. And what happened? It caused the people to, to riot and get mad and gnash with him at teeth. And they stoned him. They took him out of the city and stoned him. And, and he said, I could see Yeshua sitting on the right hand of the Father. And he stood up to welcome Stephen to, to the eternal. He saw him. See, he wasn't thinking about the pain of being stoned. He wasn't thinking about what his own family members, his own brethren, his own, you know, his, these are his people that were killing him for the if, because he believed in the Messiah Yeshua and because he chose to, to to with passion to preach to them the truth even when they did not want to hear the truth they stopped up their ears to hear the truth because the enemy didn't want them to hear the truth and because of their anger and their violence towards him to try to to shut him down you know, he was able to see beyond the physical and he was able to see into the eternal and he seen his reward was in heaven and that Yeshua stood up in approval for what he, for his faithfulness. He stood up in 
to honor him in. And we are to that is the, what we should that is what we should long for. We should long to be honored by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let him stand up on in your you know for you when you have to go through such hardships. When you have to go through such difficulties. Let him let him show you that he approves of you. Just like Paul says, you know, you know my departure's at hand. But there lays before me a crown of life. He knew his rewards. He knew his rewards were not going to come down here. His rewards was not going to be down here. So his rewards were going to be the eternal rewards of heaven. So he knew that he was going to have to be persecuted, that he was going to have to be ostracized. He's going to have to be re rebuked and he's going to have and he's going to have to suffer down here and suffer and suffer death down here by his own people. By his own loved ones. His heart was his heart was always bent about his people. The saving of his people. Just read Romans 11. It's always a bent. If I could be a castaway for them. He, his heart's desire was for always for them to see Messiah Yeshua. And come unto salvation. And he gave his life for it. Mm -hmm. For the saving of his own people. And not only for his people but for the Gentile world. And he knew that it took, it was going to cost him his life. And he was going to suffer greatly for it. But his eyes were fixed. His eyes were fixed on, 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 the, on the heavenly rewards. Mm -hmm. On being approved of God and not being approved by man. Right. We need to get a different perspective. Mm -hmm. We need to get a different perspective. And it says... So he, we're looking, we're listening for the small, still voice, the instructions of God, not, not, not to do away with the instructions of Scripture. We need to obey those absolutely, but we also need to obey the small voice. We need to get a get a personal mandate from heaven. We need to know God's will for our lives and do it, do it, purposely do it. Mm -hmm. Do you find it and do it? Yes. And don't waver from it. If it doesn't bring you any rewards, that's okay. If mm -hmm. it doesn't bring you any accolades, that's okay. Find his purpose and do it. Mm -hmm. And don't waver from it. Yes. Don't don't allow the enemy to to disappoint you, discourage you. Mm -hmm. But follow through. So the fourth letter so he was, let's see, we're, we're looking at the scriptures here. We're looking at 40 or 40 nights, the rains came down. And the fourth letter is Dalit. So we're seeing that the Dalit is a door, it's a picture of a door. Mm -hmm. So when we see the four, we're, we're looking at the <laughs> eternal realm. We're looking, you know, it's no more a physical, mm -hmm. but this now is becoming a spiritual uh, a spiritual connection. So the ranks came down so, uh, 40 days and 40 nights. So that means that the judgments were now, the judgments of heavens were being executed on the people. Mm -hmm. And so and so they weren't just getting a physical uh, judgment. You reap what you sow. But now God's wrath was being poured out. And so the windows of heaven were open up and the rains came down. So there was a dumping. But Noah and his family were safe in the ark. And they were and they were in the uh I mean they were in the ark for how long were they in the ark for like four it was about four months or longer. Yeah. Something like that. They were in there quite a long time. And and God until the waters receded, and anyways, until until God was able to uh, to show them dry land and where they were able to uh, get off and be able to live freely, without being confined under that ark. Right. But that ark represents Christ. That ark represents His protection, and even though that ark was secure them it was time for them to be released and to do to do their work here on earth mm -hmm. 
under under the guise of the Melchizedek order, which is the heavenly order. Yes. He was the priest. He was the husband of the earth. He was the priest. And now he was the mediator between creation and heaven. So anyway, so the six, uh, so anyways, we were going to look, so, uh, let me go back. So, so the fallen, so it says the sixth letter, let me go up a little bit. God put clues in these events to tie the spiritual to the physical. The heavens and the earth were dumping water, a connection of the earth and the heavens as a unified one. Noah was 600 when the floods came, and the scripture says he was perfect in his generations. The sixth letter in Hebrew is a vav, which connects, like a nail or like a, a hook. Mm -hmm. It connects, which is a picture of a hook to connect. Picture uh, the perfect and strong means undefiled. We all know that Noah had the fallen sinful nature like Adam's lineage. What separated him from the rest? I believe the phrase Noah was perfect meant Noah had no Nephilim blood in him. Uh, his genetics were not defiled. The six represents man, man made on the, on the sixth day. Three score, which we see this in the, New King, in the King James Version, three score means 60. In my interpretation, because, you know, angels look like man. Yes. They, you know, they, you know, they have an appearance of man, mm -hmm. but they're, but they are made more superior than the, than Adam's lineage. So 60 to me is just a, a 10th degree above man. So to me, the 60 represents the fallen angels because they're at like a 10th degree higher in stature, superiority than the human race. So man is six, which represents man created, a created to be an, a, a, an end, a dependent on God. See, our strength and our superiority comes from God and God alone right. through, through our connection with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit being inside of us makes us above the angels. That's why we have authority over the angels because we are in over demonic realms because we have the power inside of us. We are connected with, you know, we are, we are been made to house the Holy Spirit. We are made to, to, uh, to be this, uh, tabernacle for the Holy Spirit. So the power of the Holy Spirit resign, uh, residing in us makes our, makes the power and the authority uh, inside of us when we speak in the name of Yeshua principalities and powers and the demonic have to flee because it's showing it's a, a supre, uh, the supremacy of the kingdom of light or Yeshua's kingdom over the kingdom of darkness so three score in, in, my, in, in my interpretation is the fallen angels because without the Holy Spirit Man is just six. He's just an inferior creature. But with the Holy Spirit residing in them, makes him above the angels. Man, what does the enemy want? He wants to connect the inferior of man to the superior of the fallen angels to, to make them uh, uh, more than what God had created them. Make them a, a a super human to that uh, that is outside the guidelines of what Yovah created him. So to me, the six represents man. Man on the sixth day, three score means sixty is fallen angel mingled with the six, the daughters of men, and we see this in Genesis uh, six and one and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and the daughters were born unto them that the sons of god saw that the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of their choice so there was a mixture of the fallen which is a superior class uh, over the the creation of man and they uh, went into the daughters of men and they created hybrids 
or the Nephilim or the fallen. And there were giants in the land, the Bible says, men of renown. So the genetic mutation had gotten uh, corrupt. Uh, the, the Bible says that the, uh, all of man were, was defiled and corrupt. And I, I said in my last video, I don't believe just because of the genetic mutation of the fallen angels, but I also believe the practices of the fallen angels, the fallen angels taught them uh, how to uh, defy God and rebel against him in such a manner that corrupted them to the point that they took upon the nature of the serpent to the degree that they were reprobates and they could not be retrieved. Because the Bible says that their, their, their imaginations were on evil continuously. So when we see that, it, you know, in Revelations that, you know, six and the number of the beast would be six, three score and six, we can see by breaking this down that the man connected to the fallen angels mixed with the daughters of men, which is six again, are, are going to create a, a, a fallen superior over the natural superior, uh, the natural creation of man. So this is going to be a superior race, an Aryan race, a superior race above what God has created. And I believe, and I wrote in my, uh, in my book that it's not yet published, I wrote about Cain, because I believe that Cain, let me get this up, was, you know, when he, when he uh, murdered Abel, I believe God put a mark up on him to protect him and to protect him from the fallen angels because he knew that they were superior, a superior, a tenth, a degree more higher in stature and, and, and abilities and that he could, uh, and these fallen angels could eradicate him, uh, him in a moment in a moments or a second in time you know what i mean there's no competition there there's no fair game there if 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 cain was being banished where the fallen angels were where the darkness was because he was a murderer and god had to banish him from from the from well the promised land where his house was and, you know, resides, then he was going to be subject to the fallen angels. Yes. And so God had to mark him knowing that he created humanity to be dependent on him. So, you know, so within his rebellion, God could not have him be dwelling in his house. Right. Or in, in, or in his vicinity. He had to be, he was excommunicated. He was banished from God's presence, even because, you know, God spoke to him. He said, he said, you know, sin crouches right at the door. Yeah. So the, God was still interacting, even though they were not in the garden, God was still interacting with, with Adam and his lineage. You know what I mean? Because God knew that without his protection, they would be destroyed by the fallen. So God had to put spiritual laws into place to keep this from happening. Yep. And let me see. It says, so, so what does the enemy try to do? He's constantly trying to us, us to remove ourselves from God's protection. His, his goal is to remove us from God's protection. So he had, if we relinquish our rights and give him our rights and, and submit our will to to him then he has power to do his will to us see if you remove yourself from god's covering and his protection then you're open game for him and a lot of times what do you do he gives he gives a lot of rewards to a lot of these celebrities but then they you end up dying an early death right because they're no longer under god's protection anymore they they're subject to their master, to their to to who they put their their allegiance to, and so that's why it says, "I'm going to read read what I wrote." 
because I think that mark is very significant that he that, that we can look and we can go to the law of first mention and we can see that when when we see revelations 13 where the beast and the system will put a mark and no one can buy or sell without the mark we can see we can go to the the law of first mention in genesis and see that god put a mark on cain right so it's like a reverse see Satan does everything opposite so he's going to do a reverse action. So, okay, you're going to mark Cain so I can't get a hold of him, even though he sinned and now he's a murderer and now he's more like my character than your character. But you're going to protect him. And anybody who touches him, I will destroy seven times or sevenfold. Anyone who touches Cain, I will, I will destroy sevenfold just because... He has this mark. So what is what is Satan's going to do? Well, okay. Well, you want to play that game? I will remove them from your protection. I'll remove them from you of of, of your uh, capabilities of of providing for them and and taking care of them and being their shield. I'll remove them from your covering and I'll put them under my covering. And when I put them under my covering, I can do it as as I will because they has submitted to me as their master and now I can destroy them at my discretion, at my will. Has this no more long? Yeah, and so I'm going to have them mark themselves in loyalty <coughs> to, him. To, to him so I can do whatever I want to them. Now they're my slaves. They're subject to me and I can do it to them as will. When I'm ready to destroy them, I can, I can shut them off. In a moment's notice, I can obliviate them. I can, I can, I can eradicate them, because they they're no longer your creation. They belong to me. Do you see the difference? So it says, it says uh, humans are created with spirits, which depends on Yovah to receive from the kingdom of heaven or the tree of life. Angels were created independent from the tree of life, with uh, eternal celestial bodies. We're, 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 uh, what are we, we're, uh, we're extraterrestrial or uh, we're terrestrial and they're extraterrestrial, I guess what you could say, or they're celestial and we're just physical human bodies. I don't know all the interacts, but we're terrestrial beings. So we belong in the physical. We don't have these supernatural capabilities. No. We don't ha we're not capable to fly or we're not capable of that. We don't have this mighty strength in us. We're not able to, we're not even comparable to the celestial bodies or the celestial beings. However, Yah is still sovereign and has declared that certain fallen angels will be, will die like men in Psalms 82 and 5. And it says, in the days of Noah, before the flood, I believe the eternal and the physical realm will be unified. So like in the so in the days of Noah, I believe that it the, the breach had not that gap had not a separation had not been wide enough. So God was still interacting. Not only was God interacting with man, but the fallen angels were also had their access to the man, even if they came down on Mount Hermon or what. However, they came down or how they appear, they still cohabited with man. They still had the, they had ways of uh, of being here with man, and a lot of times with the. Uh, you know, with the pre-Adamic nature, they, a lot of people believe that, uh, that, that there was, that's where they were banished. They were banished here on earth and they were living here on earth because the, the Bible says that the earth was full of void and full of darkness, mm -hmm. you know, so they were already had their, uh, connections with the earth. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. So when God created man, he created them in the in the garden or put them in the garden of his house of his protection but outside of his house are weeping and gnashing of teeth the, it, you know the while the bible says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth you know i will cast you out well that's darkness that's outside of god's house that's outside of his his dwelling place where he resides and this is where cain was going outside where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth where the where the evil was present but it was present in this physical realm 
even though they were metaphysical, supernatural. That's where we get the the uh, the heroes and the John and the giants, or in even the um, superheroes or the or the mythology of all these gods. You know the uh, where mankind you know came up with these concepts of 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 the of the gods of the earth or whatever of mythology. Mm -hmm. So, anyways. So they were able to cohabit with mankind. At that time, the conditions of the earth supported both human and celestial bodies. After the flood came the separation of celestial beings from the natural temporal beings was that gap got even further. So God's house and the spiritual realm and the physical realm, there was a a veil yeah. where it was a vibe there was a huge separation now that it wasn't going to be easy for these beings to be able to cross over to this realm easily so so god put a trap or he put a protection for man so man can multiply on the earth uh, uh, protected in uh, and without the interference mm -hmm. of the fallen where they're not they don't have access to man this was after the flood, though. But before the flood, they had access to mankind. And, and they interacted with man, and, they, and they, were, they cohabited, and they taught man how to be and live in rebellion. You know, in the face of God. Because we see, also we see Nimrod that did that. He was a mighty hunter. And he was in quite rebellion against Almighty God. Yeah. And so we do see that in scripture. After the flies came, separated the celestial beings from the eternal beings. In my opinion, the agenda of the coming beast system is to return the earth condition to the days of Noah and the days of Lot. We can't forget. And they once again make the earth conducive for the fallen angels and the remaining humans to cohabit. And for more information, you can look for research on transhumanism. So they're trying to make human above their pay grade before what God created them. You know, they want, you know, they just make them a superior race. Yes. The B system must attempt to make the human body able to live as a celestial being in order to make it a parallel universal system to work together. So for them to be able to cohabit with man and man can be able to cohabit with them, there's got to be some changes in our universe. Yeah, that's what's happening now. And that's what they're that's what they're attempting to do. The fallen angels corrupt humanity in the spirit of the mind in order to destroy human tabernacle which was created by Yovah's presence. In Genesis 6 states that the fallen angels uh, seed mixed with mankind seed and created hybrid giants or renowned men of renown, which are giants, superior race, uh -huh. a mighty race, a mighty man. That's what renown means, means uh, men of renown, means uh, a mighty. And now Ge uh, they're a they're mighty they're ones. They want to connect you with the computer so you would be mighty. Yeah. Your brain. Your mm -hmm. yeah. These were, you. Uh, yeah, they do. They want to, they want to displace Yeshua. They want to displace anything God from our very existence and our dependence on Him. Well, that's what that slog or whatever his name is said. He said he, he wants to get rid of all Christians and Jesus. Yeah, they want Satan wants us solely dependent on Him. Mm -hmm. Because if once we get solely dependent on Him, what can He do? He mm -hmm. can do as He wills to us. Right. We're, we are been removed from Yovah's protection. We're no longer under his guise. We're, uh, we're away from the spiritual laws that have been placed for our protection from these fallen creatures. Mm -hmm. But because men desires evil and their deeds are evil, they des they're, they're going to go into this beast system by the droves because they are already being conditioned to be in right Defiant rebellion, rebellion against Jehovah. Yeah. They are in. They they are doing their own will. Mm -hmm. What is pleasing in their own eyes? Right. And and they are and they are not submitting themselves to the to the plan of salvation. 
Yeshua is our only protection. Mm -hmm. if, if Satan can get you to remove you away from your only hope, your only salvation, your only protection in Yeshua, guess what? You're going to be open game for the fallen. Yep, that's true. He is our only covering. <laughs> so Genesis 4, 12, and 15. When thou stillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto her strength, a fugitive, a vagabond, shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. So Nassau, and that means Nassau, so greater than he, so it was above. His anguish, see, the, my punishment is greater than what I can bear. So when, he put, when you look at that word Nassau, that is above the natural. We're, we're, now his, he's seeing if you punish me, if you banish me, my my, uh, my punishment is greater than my ability, greater than my strength, greater than what you have created me as a human vessel. Without you, I cannot stand in the midst of these fallen creatures. Right. I will die. Behold, thou hast driven me out of this day from thy face on the, of the earth, and from the face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. So he understood that Yovah, being in his presence, even though he sinned, even though he, he committed a murder, he, he knew that his only hope, and his only protection, and his only protection was, from was from God himself. Right. Even though he acted in his emotions. I say that because he there was no law that says thou shalt not murder. There was no law that shall not. He was acting within his own nature. Mm -hmm. His nature was defiled. His nature was corrupt. And the serpent got in through Adam. And now he was going to act in a sinful nature right. that he didn't have a law telling him that it was wrong. Nope. He reacted in his feelings. See, the soul is the seat of self and a soul that is not governed by the Holy Spirit will react. See, the law keeps sin at bay. But if, it, if the law and the penalty of the law was not there, we would just be va fugitives and vagabonds and we'd be out killing one another and acting within our nature. Right. We'd just be doing whatever what was pleasing in our own eyes. We would be getting vengeance. Do you see? So the God's punishment, they knew by conscience. Just like it is by, by you know, they're, they're, the Bible says in the last days that the men's conscience would be seared. Mm -hmm. They would not have to. So by nature or by your conscience, you know that there is a God. You know right from wrong. So by his conscience, he knew after he did it, he, he knew it was wrong. And he knew that he was going to suffer the punishment. Does that? But he knew that because he's the reality of those spirit beings being there at face value, he's seen them. He knew them. He he interacted. He, you know, he understood mm -hmm. what, what was going to happen to him. See, we don't have that privilege to understand that what lurks in the darkness. We don't see the evil unless the Yovah know, or the spirit actually allows our spiritual eyes to see. We don't see what lurks in in the darkness what's out to destroy us what's what's what is hanging things around to kill still destroy because he's protecting us from that he has shielded us from that spirit realm yeah but if we knew some of the things that we do say and, and the sins that we commit if we knew the spiritual implications and if we actually seen the presence of darkness We'd be more apt not to behave in the way we behave. We would yeah. understand that the the enemy is there to kill, steal, destroy, destroy. But he may not destroy us physically, but he is destroying us on the inside. He's destroying us, our relationship. He is he is weakening us. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. He is 
he is allowing the demonic to to have full power inside of us does that make sense so and and not only that we open doors to the demonic for for our future generations mm -hmm. so but if we understood that we the evil is present we wouldn't be so apt to do the things that we do we'd be more cautious so anyways he knew what would happen and it says and it shall come to pass that and the lord said unto him there uh, three four whatsoever slayeth cain so uh you know yovah the, the the spirit of god spoke to the universe the principalities and powers and rulers and all the the the, the host in heaven and in the earth said if anyone slayeth Cain because this is an unfair component to to being an inferior creature creation of of Yovah that anyone shall take on him or try to slay him it says vengeance shall be taken upon him sevenfold now that means that if you try to destroy him or slay him now you're gonna have to deal with me Yovah said you're gonna have to deal with me and nobody wants to deal with him. <laughs> you know, I don't want to deal with the, the fear of God was upon everybody. Do you see what I mean? Uh -huh. And it's still, you know, Satan is limited and the kingdom is, of darkness is limited. That's why they have to use deception. They have to be, de de you know, use the, the, the a evil stealth way of coming to us and seduce us and bring us outside the covering of God. Because if you are God and you are and you've been sealed with Him, then you're not. And the Bible says, "Vengeance are mine," saith God. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to have to deal with the Almighty God and even Satan knows his limits even even he knows he has to get around that yes he has to get around yes. it yes and it says and the lord said a mark upon cain lest anyone finding him shall kill him in my opinion after cain slew abel y'all marked him mark cain in order to protect him from the powers of the fallen cain was an inferior creation in comparison to the celestial realm the banishment removed Cain from y'all's protection and he could not hide no more under his covering. Yeah. So he was without the covering. He was naked. Mm -hmm. He didn't have the clothes, uh, garments of, uh, of, of Messiah or that, you know what I mean? That's what, that we are in Messiah. We are clothing him. He didn't have that, that veil, that protection, you know, that, that, you know, that is provided for us. <laughs> It's so it's so good because when we see this this veil that's covering, it's like a father, mm -hmm. you know that that is covering his children, protecting his love his 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 love for his children. His, he wants to protect. He he's acting. Yehovah is acting in the realm of a father. Mm -hmm. You know, of, you know, wanting to even though he sinned even though he, he you know the disappointment of that sin he still loved Cain enough to want to to, per, per, to provide protection even in Adam's lineage even when Adam sinned he was still interacting with them he was still trying to be a father to them mm -hmm. but they could only go so far they can only interact with so far there was a breach there was a separation but he still was acting Knowing that they were they that they couldn't help themselves, knowing you know that they they couldn't live in this life without him, mm -hmm. he just didn't forsake them. That's what I'm trying to say. He didn't just leave them. And even when Cain fell in some of the, fell into this you know this this sin that is you know that, that took a righteous man, you know even when he fell into that that kind of darkness. Yovah still protected him mm -hmm. and said, anyone who touches him, I will, I will avenge seven times, seven times will be your, your downfall. Mm -hmm. That's, 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 that's pretty, only God can do that. Only God can do seven times more. <laughs> do you know? Cause we're so limited. 
but he's he's not no, limited no he's not limited and so the banishment remove got came from yobah's protection and could not hide from the impending dangers from the kingdom of darkness cain knew that without y'all's protection he would be a target for terror humanity cannot contend with the supernatural on their own ability so yobah balances the scales by this mark to ensure that the metaphysical cannot take advantage of the inferior a poem, a, a, a inferior, let me, lost my place. The inferior opponents by killing, killing them ruthlessly. The metaphysical cannot harm or damage all's creation in the physical realm unless the individual decides to make Satan his or her master. And then he has full reign. The inhabitants were mixed with the fallen and possibly other life types and were, dis and were destroyed during the flood. Y'all marked Cain to shield and cover him from the destruction of the fallen or destruction by the fallen. They, could, they would have obliviated or obl obl obliterated him. The judgment would have been unfair on y'all's part. Y'all's justice to fair and balance with equal weights and measures. Cain is no match for the kingdom of darkness without Yovah's there to give him that ability and power. Yovah assured Cain's protection from the fallen by avenging Cain's blood sevenfold. Y'all's destruction judgment on Satan's kingdom would have been seven times greater. That, that would have probably wiped them out all together uh seven times greater uh if he if they took his life and they knew that satan knew humanity was created with a dependence on y'all covering to shield him from the supernatural satan must comply to the spiritual laws and only work to seduce humanity into believing lies so he can still kill and destroy them Satan is paving the way for humans to be metaphysical so to remove them for y'all's protection. Mm -hmm. So that's what I believe with the mark of the beast. So Satan is paving the way for humans to be metaphysical so that they can remove them from y'all's protection. Matthew 18 and 6. But whoso shall offend stubble another one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hang about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. Superhumans would classify as an opponent equal to the fallen angels. Satan uses stealth measures to deceive mankind to submit to his plans to relinquish their dominion, uh, dominion of the earth. But the mark of the beast will morph people into superhumans for Satan to utterly destroy without sudden consequence to his kingdom. Satan has to bypass the oath given to Cain so to thwart y'all's destruction on him. And on that, I'm going to end. Amen.